My mission is a really simple one. It's just to be the fastest human on the planet, powered by the wind. I've always wondered how fast can you go? Where does it end? And I want to find out where it does end. He's high, he's high, go, go, go. Oh. I think the thing that scares me probably the most is failure. 177, can't go much faster. It's not crashing and burning, it's not hurting myself, it's just failing. We're very, very close. And then like that's it. It's shutting down at the end of the month. Yeah, it's pretty shit, really. Sorry, boys. A lot of people behind this project want to see me come out the other end in one piece, but if I don't push hard enough and I back off, we're not going to break the record. It's a little bit out there, but in crazy we believe. Hopefully about to be the world's fastest GPS unit. And she's all done. This is not a backyard operation. OK, happy, boys. We're going to do it full on, and we're going to push boundaries that have never been pushed before. And I won't stop until we're successful. The stakes are massively high. Just this is sort of the culmination of my 45 years on the planet. It's got to be good. There's something going wrong here. Oh, something's wrong. Rolling. Here we are. What spins my wheels is just going fast. I've won world championships, Olympic medals and America's Cups. I feel like I need to push myself to be scared quite a lot. For me, I need the next buzz going forward and pursuing the goal of how fast can you go powered purely just by the wind is something that I've wanted to find out since I was a, a little kid. Back in 1999, the Iron Duck guys, you know, set a, a cracking pace of over 185 kilometres an hour in a craft that was made out of steel and a few old car parts. Absolutely incredible achievement, what those guys did. Richard Jenkins obviously stepped that up to a whole new level in 2009 with his Greenbird craft, and he was really, really on the edge, and it took him over a decade to break that previous record. Look, a lot of people look at the footage of Richard and go, you know, he's nuts, he, he's mad to do what he's doing, but I look at it and just get excited by it and just go, that is absolutely epic. 126.36. I'd call that 126. <laughs> I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of the history of wind-powered world speed records, and it would be awesome to be able to break his record. Sorry, Richard, but <laughs> it'd be great to be able to break it. Well, this is the world famous Ashby shed. Every man's got to have a, have a shed. I've got sail battens, a rally bike there, tyres and wheels and bikes and dinghies and some Olympic sails. The Glenn Ashby that I know, he's a genius. This wall's sort of just a bit of a funny wall that's been part of my wetsuit cupboard for, for a long time. The work that he's done in terms of high performance using uh, wind and water, it's quite remarkable what that fellow has been able to achieve and is achieving. A little bit of land yachting there in Holland. Glenn's one of those guys that just really pisses you off because he can do everything he turns his hand to. 
I mean, I ride bikes with him. He's really good on a bike. Then if you take his sailing skill that he has, what's he won, 18 world titles? I mean, it's, who the hell's got 18 world titles, you know? He's just got that skill set that allows him to be able to bounce off either foot, and that's quite rare. Going to the America's Cup World really was a, a massive development game, which was, which was my whole life. This moment is huge, and it belongs to Everett's Team New Zealand. This team, in the last decade or so, has moved into an environment where it's seen as a, as really a technology organisation. We pride ourselves on being able to make projects that are impossible possible. And guys like Glenn, and they're rare, and we're lucky to have a number of people like him, have helped forge that innovation. The New Zealanders paddling into the history books. Treasure prize. The America's Cup stays in New Zealand. Yeah, look, at the moment, I don't really know what the future holds for me. I'm very much personally at a, I guess, a crossroads of my life and a, and a crossroads in my career, and only I can sort of figure that out. I'm definitely not the guy that can just keep doing the same old, same old forever. I, I absolutely have to be 100% taking on new challenges. Yeah, it's a big call to step away, but it's, um, it feels right to take on these new challenges in, in my life, and I don't want to die wondering, what if? <laughs> This challenge of being the fastest wind-powered human has always been a burning one for me. And you never know when the opportunity is really right to do that, but um, maybe now is the right time to, to take this challenge on. I think the lesson is if you're going to take on these types of projects, you have to have a good team of people around you and no one single person ever wins the America's Cup. The team always wins the America's Cup, which is really important to me. We know what our projects are. Ultimately, we've got one priority, and that's to win the next America's Cup. No, no, exactly. Well, I haven't forgotten about it. Don't worry about that. But it's, um, this, is, this is a nice, a nice little one to hopefully slot in there and be able to tell our grandkids about. You come out of the end of the last America's Cup, and everybody's like, and yeah, that was great, we did well, blah, blah, blah. Wake me up when it's time for the next one. No team has ever won it three times. Why? Teams stagnate. This was a, a new challenge because maybe we did need a new emotion and somehow we needed to understand that we can still do it. But the way this team works, everybody agrees on the project before we start. It's got to be this many people for this long. How much time are you using Guillaume, Romaric, Tim? The whole bag of tricks. You're going to write that up? But yeah. I can build a team around that, and even for this summer. OK. We're hearing some good stuff. When we took this on, and you know, there was people, this bridge too far, why would we do this? It's too fast. And all those things are true. But this organisation's taken on a lot of projects that you know, sort of can't be done, but always get done. And. I guess this, you know, core group of us believe that it, it was very breakable. Jenkins has done a really good job at where he's put it, but, you know, we've got to pick that marker up and move it quite a long way. It fits into this idea of bringing technology to a new dimension. But again, you need the right people, and Glenn is very daring. He has this equilibrium which is essential to reach a record. We're trying to break what the other guys took 10 years to do in 10 months. That's a big ask. I think we've got the craft, uh, I think we've got the location, and I think we've got the personnel to, to do it. But if we can't get it done in the 10 months, it'd be no good.
Due to the pandemic and restrictions around travel, I only ever got to see the craft and the design basically on a computer screen. So to be able to be there for the christening and just see everybody and see the craft ready to roll was pretty surreal. It's sort of a bit of a pinch yourself moment. Well, here we are 10 months later with a craft that we all hope will become the world's fastest wind-powered craft ever built. Mother Nature will provide us with a gift when she is ready for us to break the record, and not before. There was a part of me that was like, OK, it's real now, and there is no going back. You've, you've committed, and that's a daunting feeling, but it's also a really exciting feeling as well. And, to feel it, touch it, sit in it, is a realisation that it's real and, and that you are about to embark on a, on a pretty epic journey and, a, and an amazing challenge. Anyway. <laughs> the first sailing of the craft we did at the Fenilpai Air Base was pretty surreal. Okay. New Zealand, proceed via Texaway Alpha. Thank you, Dean. like a, a, a pinball in a pinball alley going down the runway. You didn't have much wobble room. You know, there's a lot of unknowns with the craft at that particular time as well. We only got up to about 90 kilometres an hour by the end of the runway, but it wasn't super windy. So although we were on a tarmac surface, which is very different to the salt, the fact that the craft was actually pulling forward and accelerating under, under its own steam, you know, was pretty cool. What we've come up with is a craft dedicated to sail on one tack. We've gone down the big heavy craft route and, and we're just going for maximum horsepower. The wing is the only thing pushing us forward. Every other part of the craft is trying to slow us down, so we've got to optimise those so they're the minimum drag, yet providing grip and power that, that we need. We gave ourselves a couple of little scares at Fenilpai. Yeah, flew the pod wheel a bit higher than what we sort of were ideally uh, wanting to do. And, you know, we went off the end of the runway once. Well, you ended up on the ladies' TV. You need a couple of scares to sort of, you know, work out where the edge is. You know, got a lot of weight and a lot of momentum and a lot of inertia and yeah, I think the old brakes are, um, <laughs> are working hard. Yeah, anyway, I guess that's why grass is at the end of runways, not brick walls. Glen safety is top of our list. We're aiming significantly above the old record. We want to smash it, you know, we're designing on the edge here. We just got to be on the leading edge, not the bleeding edge. We're punching into motorsport territory here, which, you know, is, is sort of new ground for us. Yeah, there's so much we've just got to go and learn and you know, Glenn's clearly got an appetite to take on that danger in order to um, set that world record. Sailing on the edge of grip on foils is one thing. I'm shaking, I'm shaking a little bit. But sailing on the edge of grip with tyres and wheels is something completely different. So the opportunity to get out to Hampton Downs and actually do some high speed driving with a driving coach was really invaluable. Okay, so hard on the brakes, harder, 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 harder. Bloody so hell, that, you gotta push. Yeah, right? you do. So that first initial brake pressure needs to be really hard, okay? Now, hard on those brakes, hard on those brakes, hard on those, harder, 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 harder. 
harder. That's it, just relax, turn the steering wheel. Getting slowly, getting used to it. No, you're doing good, you're doing very good. So up high, up high, on the brakes hard. Hey, good work. <laughs> G-forces, I think, probably are the biggest thing that it's hard to simulate. Real life is always different. The noises are different, the feelings are different. So being able to actually feel some G-forces in real life, feel every little bump, every little movement is really, really necessary for accurate control. As we've seen with this craft and the record, you've got to be somewhere between a petrol head a yachtsman and a techo, because it's sailing, but it's really more like driving a drift car as well. I think I haven't actually strapped myself in really tight enough to the land yacht. I think the tighter you are, the more you feel. And you lay over that this absolute desire to want to do it, because most people wouldn't want to do it. Living over there and staying in the desert, waiting for the opportunity, you got to really want to do that every day. It's a hostile place, but it's the platform he needs to break the record, and he would stay there as long as he had to. Lake Edna is really a place that you can't describe to people. You get there and you sort of feel it. It's, it's so unique. You pop over the hill and you look across the expanse of salt and it's absolutely mind-blowing. I would have thought there'd be a lot more wind than this. Just arrived at uh, Lake Gardner and it's exactly the opposite of what I needed to be. No wind and got about five inches of water in the lake. The container's leaving tomorrow, so definitely gonna need to get this water gone and um, you know get some decent breeze in to, to try and evaporate it. So yeah, pretty disappointing. For a wind-powered world land speed record, you really need a big, long runway. Super flat, super smooth, and provides really good traction. Lake Gardner was chosen above all the others just due to its expanse of space, and also the type of salt. It's very, very pure and quite grippy. It's a very sacred place to the local Gawler Rangers people here. Um, it's believed to be up to 160 million years old. I think the most important part of this whole record attempt is, is really Mother Nature. I feel we've got the right craft, we've got the right personnel. Hopefully I can do my job well. But at the end of the day, Mother Nature needs to provide not only the wind for us, but the surface has to be right as well. You know, it has to be dry and it has to be grippy and it has to be really, really windy. Now that's, that's all achievable. It just so happens that the year 2022 has coincided with Australia, one of Australia's wettest years ever, ever. Good evening. Victoria's flood crisis is growing tonight with record flood waters expected to hit almost 8,000 homes. It has been an intense and exhausting day and night and it's not over yet. Yes, yes, says the worst is yet to come. Act of nature, we can't do much about it, can we? It just seemed to keep raining, so... We actually lost sort of five or six weeks, um, almost seven weeks of just waiting for the lake surface itself to actually dry out. Normally Lake Gaidna the whole year is perfectly dry. Like it's a very, very abnormal for it to have water in the lake at all. Klaus was optimistic. We should see 100 millilitres of evaporation in the next four weeks. So I think, you know, we've got to keep sort of marching ahead.
So you, you don't think we need to consider a plan B or a different venue or anything like that at this stage? If we got to November, for example, and hadn't been able to run, then we would possibly look at the future options. But um, I think up until that point, Lake Gedden is still by far the, the, the best option for us. In the end, we, we made the call to truck everything out and, and get set up here and, and try and get going in the hope that one day we would get a dry surface to really push the craft hard. This is this big dip coming up here, uh, Nick, that we're talking about, so you probably have to button right off. It's about a 160 kilometre corrugated dusty dirt road. Sometimes that dusty dirt road can be muddy, depending if it rains or not. It's a super, super extremely harsh environment. I think it should be all right. It is a massive logistical challenge, and I think that really is why these record attempts are so special, um, because they are just simply so difficult to do. And yeah, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it all the time. I remember opening the container doors and breathing a bit of a sigh of relief to see that everything had really travelled so well. Apart from being a bit dusty, which is probably more from the freight yard, I think we were in bloody good shape. Hallelujah! Oh, I hope the tide coming. <laughs> it's like a Martian landscape down here. It isn't is, it? yeah, yeah. It's literally like stepping onto the moon. We've seen all the pictures and we've heard the feedback from Glenn about the lake, but to actually come here and experience it now, it's absolutely amazing. I feel like our luck had sort of changed a little bit at that point. The sun was shining, we had the containers arrived, all our gear had arrived. Everyone was super keen to get into it and get set up. And at that particular time, you know, the lake was drying out and, and things were really looking up for us. Let's bolt this thing together. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> we really, really want a light run. We don't want him to, to have too much wind on the first day because he'll get excited, as all test pilots do. They get a little bit uh, randy on it. And uh, we haven't had this thing together for a while, and there's a few things that have changed. So nice, soft, gently, gently would be the, the ideal day. Double clear, happy. They'll uh, drag us up to about 80 and I'll spike there. Two, one, all clear, all clear. It's 100k an hour there. 120. A few little slippery spots up here. Unfortunately, we've lost our canopy, which is a bugger. Luckily, we have two spare canopies, so time for a pit stop. That thing is going to be a rocket ship when we get it dialed Yeah, out. Yeah, oh, Mate, it takes off, doesn't it? Was insane. Yeah, well, that certainly got the blood pumping. Jeez, we didn't, we yeah, had no idea what's going to happen. So we roll up beside him, get in. You all right? Yeah, yeah, mate. What are we doing next? <laughs> Let's go. It's going to tidy up. How's your undies, mate? <laughs> oh, no, no drama. Like, really? When it went, I'm just like, as soon as it started to go, I'm just like, yeah. it's just sweat. Like, it's just yeah. so planted. I think the thing that scares me probably the most is, is failure. It's not crashing and burning. It's not hurting myself. It's just not being able to, not being able to do it. Just, just failing. That's, that scares me the most. In the good old caravan last night, listening to the rain trickling down, just sort of thinking, I hope that's just going to settle the dust for the drive out. Popping over the hill this morning, yes, pretty shocked to see what was a perfectly dry surface yesterday that we we're actually out doing our first runs on, you know, basically a big sheet of glass with, you know, sort of 10 to 15 mils of water across the whole lake. What could really threaten this project is we simply run out of 
run out of time. The weather doesn't play ball and, and the team has to move on to, to other things. We've just had the wettest October ever in Australia and in many of the states it's been the wettest month ever in Australia, ever. I don't want this to be a distraction for the, for the team moving forwards. I had a, a very specific window in my mind that I wanted to have this done by. What's the chance uh, of the water actually evaporating? I mean, it's a lake at the moment, right? It threatens my whole future if I can't get this done. It sort of closes a lot of doors for future opportunities. We, we just need to be ready to go at, at all, yeah, at all I, times. I think so. we can have everyone sitting there constantly for months like we are going to have. You know, that's, that was never really the plan, right? It's, we're very, very close. I'd punch myself in the head so hard if we missed an opportunity like that because I was sitting at home watching the radar and watching the, the, the weather on the, on the telly. It's got to happen and it's got to happen quickly, otherwise it'll probably get shelved. The first fundamental issue here is we've got this wrong. We've set this up wrong, OK? If you knew it was going to blow and wasn't going to rain, you'd lovely jubbly off to the races, but you don't know. We have a completely uncontrollable environment, and that's a fundamental setup problem. What, what do we do? Uh, I would pull out. It's pretty brutal, really, to sort of be staring down the barrel of the end of the program. You know, we've been trying bloody hard to, you know, to get it to a point where, you know, we can go and run. And, um, yeah, it's pretty shit, really. Sorry, boss. Right from the start, we were battling the weather. I mean, world records aren't easy to break. There's always something. And, you know, this is a lake that probably doesn't rain normally for 500 years, and it rains every damn day. I'm sure for Glenn and the team, it felt like we were pulling the plug. We were never pulling the plug. We were just putting a bit of dose of reality. Because, you know, when you're in there, they're in there every day. You know, maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow. It's damn obvious it wasn't going to happen tomorrow, and we needed to cool our jets, pull out, go back when the weather allowed. To be standing here now and have a dry surface is something that we've been waiting for for a long time. And we have a lot of dry surface. The whole lake is basically completely dry. What have we got? It's all of 2021. 20, Last time we were here, we're walking around in 50 mils of water, dismantling the boat. Now we're putting it together on, on dry salt with a little bit of breeze building, a little bit of excitement building. Ready to go, keen as mustard. Check, check, double check. Yeah, loud and clear. I'm pretty happy to go canopy down if you guys are happy. Chocks out. And she's all done. OK, happy. we're all good? Yep. The current record is 202.9 kilometres an hour, so we'll be sending, that's for sure. All clear on train. Yeah, I'm getting going here now. How's that feel? Really good. Super puffy here. Puffy, super puffy. Scraping the front pretty bad here. He's high, he's high, go, go, go. Yeah, go, go, go. go. Yeah. Oh, a little wheel fly. Yeah. Yeah, I can't believe we saw that one. Uh, that's a 194. Slowing down. Oh, I got pretty quickly to a 194, yeah. which was uh, a pretty loose 194, I might say, but awesome. Yeah, do one more on the way back and then tack around for a check. Well, really soft here. Got the 500 metre drift going on here. Horonuku is uh, not the comfiest craft to be in. Ooh. It's extremely bumpy and it's extremely noisy because you're actually trying to accelerate two and a half tonnes along the ground. 163. It's not something that you want to spend a whole lot of time in, but it has to be unpleasant really for us to have a chance of breaking this record. It's going to go with this a little bit. 
putting yourself in an uncomfortable position is testing physics. So I won. But it's also learning about what challenges yourself. Uh, 2.04, that's just a little faster than the current record. Nice boys. Oh, crack the double ton. Obviously don't have the judges here and still real baby steps for us at the moment, but an amazing achievement for the for the team and um, you know and for the craft. You know, it's um, not super, super windy yet, and to be pulling these numbers in what's not really, really howling conditions is amazingly impressive. So yeah, really, really happy. The mission with this world record attempt is to not just beat it by a little bit, it's to really smash it out of the park and, and set a really, really high bar that hopefully in my lifetime, you know, will never be broken. Glenn, this is Tim. Glenn, this is Tim. Yeah, got you there, Timmer. Yeah, just looking for a little sit rep. How are you going out there? Yeah, basically, there's some really wet, shiny, slippery patches. And it looks like some places are probably, you know, 10, 12 millimetres, maybe. Um, other places are, are completely dry. So um, we're going to have to sort of pick and choose carefully where we go. We had a lot of rain last night. There's a few wet areas. So we've got to be careful that we don't hit a puddle at 200 clicks and then just start skidding out. If that hadn't rained last night, this would have been perfect conditions. So we're just a bit mindful of that. Yeah, look, I'm probably one of the most impatient people in the world, I think. I'm not going to cope very well if I can't get this done. It's going to be a massive lesson in patience for me. But that's the beauty of the challenge, is that it's, it is so different than what we've ever done in the past and what I've ever done in the past. Got the family turned up today, so um, hopefully they won't see me spin it out and uh, roll the thing over. But um, yeah, no, it's great to see mum and, uh, and my sister and, and my daughters. So um, hopefully they'll get to see some good action and um, be able to tell their mates about it. There is a, a nervousness about the whole project, but I feel extremely confident in everyone's ability, especially Glenn's, knowing that this is just such a long, long wish of his from such a little boy. 20 knots. That's the schnitzel, keep talking it up. Got good breeze on the van right now, it's good to for me. A uh, big slide there, unfortunately. Or something. Yeah, 170 is pretty slippery down here, so it's the right area. Just need some more runway and more wind. Just peeling around here. That's the, that's the most extraordinary thing I've ever seen. What an amazing sight. Peel, going better away here, slippery. 183. Yeah, yeah, sweet as. We went from really, really grippy, like bearing away, grippy, 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 nothing. So, yeah, it's just a big lose, basically. But um, the other canopies down there, I'm all sweet. Been through two sets of undies today. I've only got one clean pair left, so better make it count, I suppose. Basically, we've just come across a really slushy wet patch, which I hit at about 184.3 kilometres an hour. And unfortunately, we uh, have broken our second canopy. We've only got one left, so, and it's not fitted out. It really felt like we were, you know, taking one step forwards and two steps backwards. Could be a long drive back to Melbourne to uh, probably pick up another one and, and get back up here. I know that it's going to be a, 
a rocky road. It's going to be a pretty bumpy journey and I know it's going to be difficult and I've got to accept that, you know, a lot of things probably won't go our way. It's really instinctive sailing at that sort of speed. Everything sort of rolls into one. You have to be absolutely on the top of your game for absolutely every aspect of what we're doing. The margin for error, as I'm finding out, is really, really narrow. If you make even a slight mistake, you wash off a lot of speed, but you can also end with sort of pretty disastrous consequences as well. Coming down. Coming down, wait for the click. Oh, beautiful. You've done a marvellous job. It's better than a bought one. It is a hot, sunny morning, and when the max wind is, it'll be sunny and mid 30s, and then in the afternoon, it'll be in the high 30s to near 40. Uh, I, yeah. I wish it was 30 to 40 knots, not 30 to 40 degrees. <laughs> it's going to be about 100 degrees yeah. in the cockpit, mate, I'll tell you. You can boil an egg on this. We'll put a cover on here soon, but as you can see, she's, you know, around that 68 mark. Why is it a problem? Oh, the resin starts to go a bit spongy. It shouldn't break, but it'll start um, giving a little bit. So the mission today is obviously get the world record. Seriously, this is exactly what we've been waiting for. Mother Nature hasn't been too kind, but she's delivered today. Hopefully about to be the world's fastest GPS unit. It's really, at the end of the day, sort of up to the weather gods and probably how brave I am. Is What's it that? possible to get some shade while I'm just stopped here, or...? Yeah, we're ready to go, right? OK, you ready? Yep. Yep, OK. Eighty k an hour. Accelerating real fast here. Nice start, Lenny. That's the perfect position. Copy, copy, copy. OK, here we go, going into this next run. Whoa, there's some huge puffs here. Here we go, guys. He's coming close. He's coming close. Oh, my God. That was 207 kilometres an hour, guys. He'll be happy, but it won't be enough, she says. <laughs> Hey Lenny, just checking in to see if you're enjoying yourself, over. <laughs> just another few knots would be just marvellous if it was possible. I just really want to send it. It's one of the rear wheels, I think. Yeah, copy. <sighs> Broke it. Hopefully not major. Ah. So it's broken in the uh, lever set. Oh, OK. Yeah, so I'll get the wheel off. This is where um, sheared some bolts off in the pod frame, so I got caught with a really big willy-willy down the bottom there and basically just about capsized the craft. Um, yeah, hopefully we've got some more bolts, otherwise it might be all over for the day. The guys have done a run back to base to see what parts we have. And we'll know probably in about half an hour whether we can get a repair done. If we've got half a chance to get it back together and robust, we'll go again. This breeze is just getting better and better. And um, there's plenty more in the tank. I think if I can get it started, oh, it's... No, it's just stripping. 
we've sort of got it half back together again, so we're hoping that it'll uh, that it'll hang together for another couple of runs in this big breeze. Time will tell. See how we go. <laughs> see you. See you shortly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, actually, I want to hear. I'll just jump in and get ready, I think, just so I've got everything turned on. I don't want to miss me, buddy. 23 knot on cover. Coming down, Reid? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. We need one of those. Okay, let's go. As soon as we can, we'll go. Okay. Happy. We're all good? Yep. Go fast. Go cold. Thanks, guys. Nice job. Great, great job. 22, 25.4. 19 knots. 17 knots. Oh. Bearing away in three, two, one. Here we go. 215. Two twenty-two point five. Woo! Oh boy! Good beauty. Really nice run. <laughs> how, how good is that? <laughs> well done. It's been an absolute bumpy road of ups and downs. <sighs> an emotional roller coaster, if you like. That's not bad. It's an unbelievably tough record to break. Absolutely hats off to Richard for what he went through breaking the previous record as well. And it's a fantastic to be part of that history going forward. Got it. Oh, yep. And I've got the unit. Yeah, it's, it's pretty incredible. It's sort of hard to put it into words. I guess contentment and satisfaction is probably the overwhelming feeling at the moment that something you've dreamt about for 40 years has actually become a reality. Soak it up, team. Fire out. Massive achievement. So stoked for Glenn and the whole program. It's a little bit out there, um, but in crazy, we believe. <laughs> we build stuff that flies and floats and rolls and all sorts. That's what the team does. And uh, here's another example of an amazing team effort. The mantra that I've probably always used since I was a kid is just always have big dreams. Don't be scared to dream hard and, and dream big because it can turn into reality if you keep having that dream and you keep chasing it. I think we've still got more in the tank, so hopefully we get to come back. Good breeze. The breeze is holding. 23 top end. Come on. Come on. Come on, Glenny. 